Oh no, I'm gonna have to take an allergy pill. Hi everybody, welcome back to my craft room. This is going to be the second video in my Aloy Tanakh Dragoon build series where I show you how I make some armor out of grass. Something that drew me to this particular armor set, aside from the total like dinosaur vibes, was this really kind of rough natural texture on some of the armor pieces. I love it and I want to recreate it and I thought the best way to do that would be to use a material called raffia. So what is raffia? Raffia is a grass. It's made from the raffia palm and it's commonly used in a lot of crafts. You can find it at almost any craft store, but at most craft stores it will have been tamed quite a bit. Usually in a craft store it's been treated so all the pieces are flat, they're uniform, they might have some kind of coating on them to make it easier to work with. Uh, not this stuff. Uh, I learned that you can buy a pound of raw raffia just on eBay. So this came from Ethiopia whole pound of it to my house in an envelope. Kind of just loose. I think it's really cool that in cosplay you can make use of really any kind of material you can think of. So I'm gonna show you how I learned to work with raffia for armor and how that went and I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. It is now the time of the cosplay where I need to, oh, hold on, that's gonna be so distracting. <laughs> Yellow, okay. The time has come to make the bracers for Aloy, and I do not love making bracers, um, but I think it, this is going well so far. I've done a bit of it off camera, just because it's been a lot of figuring out. So here's what I have. You can sew two millimeter foam to more foam fabric, so that's what I did. I have this rectangle of foam, and then I have added strips and Velcro. And this is what I'm using for the brace of my baser. The, bra the base of my bracer, there it is. So it kind of buckles in the middle here. You can see this is not good. And I need to add some texture over top of it. So I have cut out another piece. This is gonna go on top and this should hopefully add a little more sp stability. I can't speak English. Um, and this should hopefully add a little bit more stability. And then I'm also gonna cover it with raffia and that is going to be, um, that, that's gonna be the decoration. So we'll kinda see how it goes from there. So I will go over the arm armor very quickly because it was the first couple of pieces I applied the raffia to and my technique got way better as time went on. But I will talk more about my glue choices in this section. So I was very conflicted about what type of glue to use on the armor and I ultimately chose hot glue. People clown on hot glue a lot, but there is a time and a place for it and, and this was it. The go-to glue for foam is contact cement, but with contact cement you have to apply it to both pieces of the things you're gluing together. And applying super runny contact cement to individual pieces of grass? Truly my worst nightmare. I am using the Sherbonder Cosplay glue sticks and they have a higher resin content than like a regular glue stick and I think that did help a lot. Also, this is not sponsored. I just really like the sticks for EVA foam in particular. But yes, my raffia technique is not good. I was gluing individual strands of the raffia to the armor and like folding it over and it was not great, but it did look good enough. I have some wax twine I used on my last Aloy cosplay, so I got a giant tapestry needle and used that to hand stitch in some details on the armor. Then I attached these pieces together and glued it all to the base bracer that I showed you earlier. To disguise where the two pieces of foam were glued together, I took that same tapestry needle but I threaded it with a strand of raffia and whip stitched it along the edge. You'll notice that I end up using this technique in almost all the other pieces. Then I primed the bracer with some flex bond. This was my first time using flex bond and I gotta say, I like it. It works really well as a primer and even on weird materials. This is where you're going to see I started getting smarter. This is the armor piece for my bicep, which is a much simpler shape. It's just a rectangle. I laid my raffia out in a line and then applied hot glue along the top of it to pre-stick it together. Then I trimmed off the top and then glued it to the foam piece. This changed the whole game for me, honestly. I'm also working on top of a silicone mat to protect my table and because the hot glue peels right off of it.
I need to start working on the skirt. And Aloy always has just the most skirts of anybody. So I have my pants on. She kind of has two layers of skirts. So I'm just gonna measure for the under layer skirt right now. So I just need two measurements at this point because I'm mostly worried about making the raffia woven part that goes in the front. So I just need where my skirt is going to sit. And I also need the length. Looking at a reference picture, it goes a little bit above her knee. Okay, and with those two measurements, I can get started. I made a pattern out of paper and then doubled it and cut it out of two millimeter craft foam. You'll notice these are two separate pieces, but I changed my mind how I wanted them to look and connected them later, but that's not important right now. And this is where I really perfected my raffia technique. I started turning the raffia into almost little wefts, like you would use on a wig. I laid down a line of hot glue on my mat and then smushed some pre-cut raffia pieces into the glue. I did this in small sections because the glue does dry pretty fast, but then I had a whole weft of raffia I could gently pick up off the mat and then trim the edges. Then I just had to glue it down to my foam armor piece. This was still a time consuming process, but the wefts made it so much faster and it looked so much neater than my first attempt on the arm armor. Then I just gave the extra length a trim. It didn't have to be perfect since the edges are going to get covered later in the process with lengths of jute rope. You are also going to see me add pieces of this to my armor. This is jute rope. Jute is also a natural material. Uh, this is also rope that I got on eBay. I'm slightly allergic to what I found out, but it's okay because it all gets sealed away with primer and paint, so I should be fine. If you watched my previous Aloy video where I showed you how I made the bandages, uh, you'll see that when I use this, I separate it into fourths because it's a four strand rope. And then I actually iron it on a hot setting uh, to get rid of the curlier ends because it, it does get quite, quite curly. Oh no, I'm gonna have to take an allergy pill. I trimmed the rope down to size and then put a glob of hot glue on the ends to stop it from fraying. I pressed it down onto the silicone mat so it would dry flat. Then I glued it to my trimmed raffia edges. Next, I took some raffia on my big needle and sewed over every piece of raffia, both to blend the rope into the armor piece so it didn't just look slapped on there, and for some extra security. I don't want anything to fall off. And you know, my head is uh, in the way, but at least you can mostly see that I'm priming it with flex bond again. I tried it on, and this is when I decided to connect the two pieces into one, so I just glued a strip of craft foam onto the back, and then added jute rope to the top edge to make them look visually connected. I sewed that up and then hit it with a coat of primer. The next armor piece on the list was the belt, so I gave myself a quick measure, sketched out the pattern on craft foam, and cut it out. It doesn't wrap all the way around me by design because there's going to be a rather large belt buckle. Next is the raffia and I used the same weft technique I already showed you so we can just speed through that. I needed to make the belt connect to the front so I just did that with some strips of linen and parachute buckles. I wrapped the belt around myself and used some sewing clips to hold the straps on the buckle in place and so, so carefully stitched them down to the armor on my machine. I had a denim needle for strength and it did okay. The real exciting part of this armor piece is the belt loops. Using my seam gauge, I marked where I wanted the loops to sit for both the top and the bottom of the loop. Then I took my foam circle cutter and punched out where I had marked. Then I took two pieces of rope and cut them to the length I wanted and glued one side of them to a scrap piece of foam. Once that dried, I threaded the pieces of rope through the bottom belt loop hole and glued the piece of foam that the rope is attached to to the back side of the belt. Then I threaded the rope through that top hole and glued the rope to another piece of foam. That also got glued to the back side of the belt. 
This worked really well, and it feels really sturdy so the belt loops hopefully won't fall out. Then I just repeated that for the rest of the belt loops. Then like everything else, I primed it and set it aside to dry. Next is Aloy's Greaves, which are a super simple leg armor shape just made out of more 2mm craft foam. I once again didn't want to go outside to contact cement the pieces together, so I just sewed them with a zigzag stitch. I will say that it snowed the week I did this, so it was probably too cold for the contact cement anyway. And you know the drill by now, raffia weft and hot glue baby! With a reference picture nearby, I glued some jute rope to the greaves and also to the greaves straps. The greaves have hand stitched lines going horizontally across them, so I marked where I wanted those lines to be on the back side of the armor piece. I sewed along those drawn out lines using a back stitch and some twine. And look what a difference it makes! It takes a long time to hand sew in the details, but it is so worth it for the end result. I painted on my primer while the greaves were flat and then curved them into shape to dry. Normally I would save something like a quiver for later in the cosplay process since it's more of an accessory, but since it is also, unfortunately, a piece covered in raffia, I'm making it now. I traced it out in Illustrator and printed two different sizes to compare to my previous Aloy quiver. Once I picked the size I liked, I got to work tracing and cutting out the shape on 2mm craft foam. Then I covered each side with raffia using the same hot glue wefting technique from all the other pieces. For the front facing side of the quiver, I needed to add some hand stitching details so I flipped it over and drew out where I was going to put in my stitch lines. And then with my tapestry needle and more raffia, I hand sewed in those details. I also added in the twine I used on other pieces of the cosplay for some more texture. Once both sides of the quiver were raffiaed, I used a combination of hot glue and hand sewing with twine to attach them together. I don't fully trust the hot glue to stay attached, and the twine adds to the handmade look of the quiver. I have the base of my quiver done, which is very exciting. Are you sick of watching me work with raffia? Because I guarantee you, um, I'm even more sick of it. <laughs> so right now, this looks very two-dimensional. It is extremely flat. So I'm gonna do something which I like to do with all my quivers, which is to give it some bones. So I'm gonna take my quiver, and then I'm also going to take just some 10 millimeter craft foam. This looks like a lovely piece. Perfect. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces of craft foam and I'm going to make a little, uh, just an insert to kind of bulk it out and then have something that's round shaped that I can eventually stick the arrows I'm going to make into it. So I'm gonna take this, this is a good length actually, and then trace the bottom. cut this out. It is so nice to be just about done with all the raffia parts. This has been such an interesting way to go about working on a cosplay because usually I make everything like one piece at a time. Like I'll make a dress and then I'll make a, you know, a cape and then I will work on an accessory and then I'll style the wig. But with this, everything has been so, like I don't want to work on gluing the raffia and then paint it and then have to work on gluing the raffia to a different thing. Also, here's my raffia situation. I just have it in a fabric box. Um, my floor is a disaster. Everything's a mess. There's raffia everywhere. I don't ever want to work with this stuff ever again. So it feels good to get almost done with the raffia portion because it kind of feels like I have made zero progress on this cosplay at all because I've been working on it for hours and hours and you know a couple of months and it just doesn't feel like I've done anything which is not true I've done a lot all right so we got the start of the bone all right already looking just a little bit more dimensional but only a little bit so what we're gonna do 
is we're just gonna kind of draw out an oval. I have found that usually eyeballing it is fine. Um, if you want to take real measurements, be my guest. Perfect. I will very likely have to trim some excess from this, but that's okay. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna take this and it won't go in. All right, time to make it smaller. <laughs> okay, so we've created our little foam puck and it fits decently well in here. I might have to do a little more shaping, but if we push it down, then it kind of holds us open a little more attractively when it sits on the hip. We're gonna take this bone out and then glue it. Bam. I'm also gonna bulk out just the side, the middle, a little bit with some extra pieces of foam. This is not an attractive skeleton by any means. It is purely functional. And that's okay because it's inside the quiver. Nobody's ever gonna see it, presumably. I hope not. I like to keep the bones kind of closer to the middle, like that, because if you put them near the end, this has so little room near the end that it's just not, it's, it's not a good idea to push, put stuff there. Contact cement would always, would also work in this uh, situation, but honestly, I prefer to use the glue that doesn't require me to go outside um, in most applications. Like this, slide it in. <laughs> Shove. Perfect. All right. So here, there's the inside. Um, this was kind of a test fit. I'm gonna pull it back out because what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my little circle foam cutter. This is about the size of the dowels I have used in the past for arrows. And I'm actually going to first cut out this top part, just like a notch, because I want to be able to make a functional arrow because I wanna make a bow for this cosplay. I made her staff for my last one, so I wanna be able to have a bow or an arrow that I can pull out. And then I'll take my foam cutter and then I'll just poke some circles where I can stick my little fake arrows. Whoop. Perfect. Got some little holes where I can stick the eventual arrows and then I will just paint this plus the inside of the quiver, probably brown um, so you don't see it as much. All right, so now we'll do one final shove. Okay, and there it is. And now it's not so flat anymore and it's ready to be primed and then painted. It also still needs a few more details, which I will cover, I guess, right now. Like gluing some rope trim around the top edge and then adding some fake branches. For these branches, I'm using some craft foam dowels, a fully round one and one with a flat edge. I took them out to my garage and used a wood burning tool to melt in some wood grain texture. If you're going to melt foam, practice proper safety measures and wear a respirator. Then I took the dowels back in and heated them up to get them nice and flexible so I could glue them onto my quiver. And like every other piece, it got primed. The last raffia piece is the rill on Aloy's head. I made a rough pattern in Illustrator, but I did need to make a few adjustments after I printed it out. I used my paper template to cut the rill out of craft foam. This piece is going to be curved, so to help it hold its shape while I work on it, I very carefully zigzag stitch some 12 gauge wire to it. You can totally do this. Just keep the wire in the center of your presser foot and use a really wide stitch width. Then I glued on my layers of raffia wefts.
This part of the headpiece has some dimensional quality, so I'm using more craft foam to cut out those raised shapes. I just wrapped those shapes in long pieces of raffia and then glued everything together and hand sewed it down for good measure. I also needed to create some raffia and foam panels to glue into the back, and in hindsight, I probably should have just not cut the circles out and just placed the raised pieces on, but oh well. Then I did some decorative stitching. These pieces will go on the sides of my face and are so small and simple I didn't bother filming them, but now it's time to bend everything into shape. This is a sneak peek of what you'll see in a future video when I cover the machine plate armor, but that's the headpiece and it looks so cool. I love it. I placed the raffia piece behind it and it got positioned how it will need to be when it gets glued together and I love it so much. It looks so cool. Oh, I have finally finished covering everything in raffia. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was so incredibly just like taxing. My fingers are, I don't have fingerprints left uh, from the hot glue. Um, I'm so excited. Also my craft room, let me show you. Oh my gosh. It's just, excuse me, chair, move. It's everywhere. So, I need to clean up. I'm gonna clean up the raffia and then I'm gonna give all of the raffia pieces that I have made just like a base spray coat. Why am I down here? I'm gonna give all the raffia pieces a base color um, because some of the stuff I can't really do much else with until it has like a little more color on it. This looks so stupid. I'm so excited. <laughs> So glad to finally be moving past this point in the cosplay. It wasn't hard. It was just so demoralizing to be like, okay, after work, I get to go downstairs and glue for hours. Oh, and make a huge mess. I cannot, I'm never doing anything with raffia again ever. <laughs> really just want to throw all of this away right now, but I'm hesitant to just in case something gets like really ruined or damaged. So I'm just going to save it until the cosplay is a hundred percent complete. And I know I don't need it anymore, but for now it's getting hidden away. It's getting hidden away for a while. So I don't have to see it. And here's what everything looks like on with no paint. It's finally paint time. I took the pieces out to the garage and gave everything a coat of dark brown spray paint. Then once it dried, I brought it back inside to start adding the details. I started by painting the foam dowels on the quiver a light brown and painting my stitch lines a light brown as well. Then I added in dimension by painting the low points and edges with darker brown paint. Then I took a chip brush and dry brushed on a light brown to the high points of the raffia. I did this to all the pieces, and you can see how big of a difference it made when I compare the shaded grief to the unshaded one. Then it was time to add in the fun colors. I really liked using a chip brush for this since the bristles are sparse, and I just wanted a wash of color. The greaves got a blue gradient going towards the knee with some red on the sides. The skirt pieces also got a blue gradient, and the quiver got painted blue as well. I took a piece of scrap foam and made a stencil to paint on the red triangles. Painting the headpiece is really where it gets exciting. The two side pieces got a blue to lime green to yellow gradient. The top of the head has a ton of colors. I started with red in the middle and next was blue with a little bit of red mixed in. Then yellow on top and on the raised points. Then some lime green in between the red and the yellow. The color scheme is preschool, but it's going to work, I promise. The last thing before clear coating the pieces was adding a little bit more hand stitching to the front of the skirt with some twine. I really love how this turned out. Then I just sprayed on a coat of satin finish and the raffia armor was all done. And here it is. Here is the painted armor on me. I got the legs on. 
Um, I am decently mobile for the moment. I am going to be hanging a lot of machine plates off the belt. Will I be able to sit down? Only time will tell. There are a few fit issues on the armor I need to correct, like um, after flex bonding and gluing, the straps that I made for the arms and the legs don't quite go around like I want them to, so I'll need to troubleshoot that. But overall, I am thrilled. I think my favorite piece is the skirt. I think it turned out so cool. As you can see, I have the skirt on. That I will cover in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Here's the quiver. I think the quiver is also my other favorite piece. It really just turned out so great. I'm super excited to hang it off of my hip and put some arrows in it. And of course, the dinosaur rill of it all. So this is gonna go on my head and these go on the sides of my face. They look very silly. I'm a huge fan. Overall, it feels very sturdy, especially for being made out of grass. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you tuning in. And if you wanna see more of this Aloy build, I will have new videos on it coming out pretty soon. Good luck on whatever you're making and I'll see you next time. Bye.